Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm, as most of you know, I'm Marge Kleinman, the creator of Stoop Stories. I'm so happy to see you guys. Um, we know this is quite the momentous day, the verdict coming in just, what, an hour and a half ago, and a lot of people are hitting the streets, which we would be too. Um, we decided to go ahead with this because so many people, we had actually 40 people sign up for tonight, and we thought it'd be a good place for everyone to gather and just share, you know, there's so many emotions swirling around about the verdict and just in general. So, and, and the work continues. So we thought this is the perfect place to be. And um, yeah, and we just want to say, we know it's a huge win, but um, you know, every day black and brown, our black and brown neighbors and our Asian American neighbors are being killed and harassed and, anti-Semitism has been on the rise. Hate has just been at an all-time high and we know it's a very traumatic time. So we are here to support and stand in solidarity and uh, the fight for justice continues. So yeah, um, just a little bit about me. I grew up in Borum Hill, um, hanging out on the stoop of my Brooklyn Brownstone. I started Stoop Stories as a video series 10 years ago and around my neighborhood. And I revived the project at the start of the pandemic. It just seemed like a perfect time. Um, it's since evolved into a documentary storytelling project that shares um, stories from neighbors all over the five boroughs and helps people connect and share their stories. Um, you know, our mission is to really highlight voices that need to be seen and heard. Um, I have a wonderful team now, and uh, starting with Lara Weinberg, my partner in crime. So I'm going to throw it to Lara. Okay, I caught it. Hello, I'm Lara, and I'm the co-producer and editorial director for Stoop Stories. Thank you so much for celebrating our Stoop anniversary, which was just a few days ago. We appreciate all the support from people who've been following us from day one, who've been joining us just recently, and anyone who's new to Stoop Stories and here tonight. So thank you for being here. And we can't wait to hear what you've got to share and just have, your, have you listening in and helping us um, with our next steps for Stoop Stories. It's been a year of sharing your stories. We've got hundreds of stories that have been coming from around the boroughs and many, many more to go. Um, new York City Stoops have been you know, known for a place for gathering as neighbors in good times and bad. And we really want to continue to have Stoop Stories be that platform, you know, not just in a crisis mode, but long after the pandemic. And at the start of April, we actually teamed up with Time Out New York. Some may have seen on Thursdays, if you check their Instagram, we're up there. And we have lots more to come, exciting collaborations. So stick around and we will share more. And lastly, before I bounce it back to Marge, um, just what big thank you to our volunteer team. I saw Kate, who was a volunteer until very recently. So hello. We've got Delilah, who's moderating tonight's event. We have Hannah, who is brand new to our Stoop team, and we are very excited to have her. And Sydney, who made this beautiful video we are about to play for you all. Enjoy.
So Sydney did such a beautiful job with that. And we know that the video was a little laggy um, over streaming. So sorry about that, um, but great job, Sid. So yeah, tonight we wanna hear from you. As we move into this next year, we're focused on more community created content. So we're looking for you know storytellers and photographers that really center BIPOC stories as well. Um, we want your input on the stories that matter most and what communities need um, and how storytelling can make change. And we're even looking for neighborhood ambassadors to help curate stories or create exhibits or projects, initiatives in their communities with our support. So we're really excited about that. And let's see. I'm going to introduce Delilah officially, who you met earlier, um, to, to moderate the rest of this evening, the, the chat part. Um, Delilah is a community builder who runs her own event series called Heartfelt Conversation, where she helps people better connect to themselves and others on a deeper level. Great, thank you, March and Lara. So as March and Lara mentioned, I'm a community builder and I'm very excited to be running this event for Stoop Stories tonight and help you all connect. But before we get started, since I know a lot of us might have had a long, busy day, I'd love for us to take a moment to sort of just like be present and do some stretches that your body might need right now. So for me, it's usually my neck and my wrists. So, but again, like do whatever feels good for you. I'm gonna play a little music and we can stretch for about a minute. Okay, so now that we've done some stretches, I'd love to invite you to take a collective deep breath with me. And when we exhale, I want you to sigh it out and just let go of any stresses of your day. So we're gonna inhale, take in as much air as you can, and exhale, letting go of any of the stresses of today. So I hope that you feel a little bit more present now. So since it's a small group, maybe let's go around and do some introductions. So you can go around just like say your name, where you're calling in from, and maybe like one thing that you love about your neighborhood. So as an example, I'm Delilah from Brooklyn, New York, and I love Playground Coffee Shop in my neighborhood in bed -Stuy for all the community activism that they do. So I will call on someone and then you can call on the next person until everyone has gone, if that makes sense. So why don't we start off with Sydney? Hi, I'm Sydney. I live in Prospect Lefferts Gardens and hands down my favorite thing about this neighborhood is Prospect Park. I would not have survived last year without it or any year for that matter. Um, next, how about Kate? Hi, I'm Kate. Um, I'm calling in from the Upper East Side. And my favorite thing is um, the dog park near my apartment because that is where I go during the week for my mental health. Oh, and I call on Claire. Hey, I'm Claire. Thank you. I'm calling in right now from the Gowanus, um, but I grew up in the Borm Hill area. And my favorite thing about the neighborhood, um, I guess, is my Buy Nothing group. It's super supportive. Um, everyone's super friendly. and It's just a wonderful crowd. 
Uh, and I'm on my phone, so I'm gonna look, I'm gonna call on Hannah. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah. I am currently calling in from the Upper East Side, which is also Lenape land. Um, and my favorite part about my, my neighborhood is my neighborhood plant shop. They just opened during the pandemic and I've become good friends with the owners. So I'm there every Wednesday, pretty much. Um, and I will call on Elizabeth. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Elizabeth. I uh, live in Greenpoint and I, I work in Borham Hill. I'm actually in Borham Hill right now. Um, and um, one thing I really love about my neighborhood and community um, that I've, I've really appreciated the, the open streets. There's one right near me um, during this pandemic particularly and the ways that Oh no, I think you're muted now, Elizabeth. Oh, sorry. Um, but yeah, making our, our, our open, open space more open and accessible for all of us and getting to see people and walk down the street and, and say hi to each other has been really, really wonderful. So um, I will pass it to Kendra. Hey everyone, my name is Kendra Ross. Um, I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, but I live in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. Um, also the land of the Lenape and Muncie peoples. Um, my favorite part of my neighborhood is hands down Tompkins Avenue from Von King Park all the way down to Fulton. The businesses, the restaurants, the community, the organizations, I love it. I'm there all the time. And if you could pass it on to the next person. Right, yes, um, Julie. Thanks, Kendra. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Julie Guerrero. I'm originally from Rockland County, which is a suburb of New York City. I live uh, with my wife here in Windsor Terrace, Brooklyn. Um, and my favorite part of my neighborhood, definitely, especially in the past year, um, are my neighbors. And I think I will pass. Kate, did you go? You did. Lara, do you want to say hello again, or are we done? <laughs> Wait, did you say me? Yes. Okay. Well, it's good you said me because you stole my answer. So I'm gonna just piggyback off of you and expand on it and say it's my. I live. Oh, I'm Lara. I live on the Upper West Side. I actually was born and raised on the Upper West Side. Then I bopped around town and I wound up back here because I got priced out of Alphabet City, which is unheard of in my brain still from growing up here. But anyway, I live here and um, I have a lot of issues with my neighborhood this time around, but I do not have issues with my neighbors. I really have been very, very thankful, especially during the pandemic. I was telling um, my coworkers the other day that we have a little, my building's 306. So I have a little 306 chat on my phone with some of the people in the building and it started at the very beginning and it was just like, I'm going to CVS or I'm going here. Do you need anything? Do you want to take a walk? And to me, that's my neighborhood is it's the people. So um, I feel really grateful. And I'm going to bounce this over to, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'll pick someone I don't know who rhymes with Lara. Sarah, you're up. Hi, I'm so not used to being the only Sarah that I like know you're talking about me. It's amazing. Um, hi, I'm Sarah. I live in Brooklyn Heights. Um, my favorite thing about the neighborhood, among many, is that I love how kind of peaceful and quiet it is during the week. And then on the weekends, and even actually now after school, it's just it, the neighborhood fills with people from like all over Brooklyn who are going through to go down to Brooklyn Bridge Park and like the promenade. And it's just, you know, I, you know, thank God for green spaces and how that brings communities together. Uh, you know, this is, as you know, as we know, it's a, it's a really um, ghettoized 
borough in some ways and Brooklyn Heights is you know kind of a, a fairly wealthy area comparatively and although it feels unfair that we are closest to this beautiful Brooklyn Bridge Park green space I love the fact that the things that have been put in over the past like five or six years have actually attracted more people from across the borough because I think it's so important and that the waterfront historically seems like it goes goes for the often wealthier people and that sucks and it's pretty cool that even though you have to kind of walk far from the subway people come and it's so it's just makes me feel good especially with these sunny days oh um let's see some people I I know I don't know anyone so let's see um Tiffany Davis hi guys um Tiffany Davis calling in from Red Hook Brooklyn well I'm calling in from Bay Ridge my apartment but live in Bay Ridge Brooklyn um what I love about my community what I consider my community is Red Hook I love the the team effort the resiliency, the, the compassion that people have and the willingness that people have to sit down and listen and learn about what's going on. And I will pass it to, I totally forgot iPad name, but I'm gonna pass it to the screen that says iPad. I think it's Jacqueline, I think you're oh, muted right hi, now. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. Um, I'm sorry, I had my uh, thing on mute. My name is Jacqueline and I also live in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. My favorite part of Bay Ridge, Brooklyn is Shore Road. I actually have a beautiful view of the Veranzano Bridge. Um, it's just spectacular. Plus I can always, right after work, I can just take a nice leisurely walk and just come back and have this fresh air. Um, so that's it. <laughs> Um, I'll pass it on to, I think it's uh, just Mary. I think we got everyone, right? Can I, Mary, can I add you? something? Kendra, yes. I definitely would like to say, I would definitely say Tompkins Avenue, best stop, born and raised, definitely feel the vibes, love it, strong. <laughs> You're in a good spot. And I don't think we heard from Miriam. Yeah, I think Miriam, Miriam, are you with us? Can you unmute if you hear us? Hi, Miriam. Miriam, we miss you. Come back to us. You're or muted, not. although it doesn't look like you're muted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, Ms. Jones, would you like to introduce yourselves? I know you just arrived. We're just going around saying our names, where we're calling in from, and something that we like about our neighborhood. Okay, sure. Um, hi, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, my name is Erica. I live on the Upper West Side. And what was the other thing you wanted to know? Uh, something you love about your neighborhood. Oh, um, I love that I can walk to all of the parks from where I live um, and that everyone is out and I can see the same people walking around all the time. So it feels like a real community style neighborhood. I love that. Great. Um, and Miriam, we couldn't hear you, but I know you just threw in the chat that you love Barham Hill and your neighbor Marge. <laughs> uh, Marge, do you want to share anything before we move on? Sure. Yeah, I haven't shared yet. Um, I, I'm hearing a lot about parks and yeah, Brooklyn Bridge Park um, is just so beautiful. It's, it's a little bit of a walk from Barham Hill, but um, it's just so gorgeous to be able to head down to the water and then walk all the way to Dumbo. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. And just the diversity and the artists in my area, the fact that we're sort of lodged in between downtown Brooklyn and Barclay Center and Borough Hall and like all these brownstone neighborhoods, there's just a lot of activity over here and creativity, which we've seen so much of during the pandemic. So yes, grateful to be here. Great. Yeah. Thank you all so much for introducing yourselves. So now that we've taken a moment to ground ourselves, introduce yourselves, as Marge and Lara talked about earlier, Soup Stories is all about sharing our neighbor's stories. And we would love to hear yours and have you meet your neighbors and connect. 
In New York City, we don't often get the opportunity to connect with our neighbors, let alone ones across different boroughs. So let's get to know one another by answering some questions in breakout rooms. Now, if you're a former New Yorker or not in New York City right now, you can still chime in about New York or just think of your current neighborhood when answering the questions. So basically how this is gonna work is we're gonna have four different prompts in total, and you'll be put into breakout rooms four different times with a group of three to four people. And you'll have six to eight minutes as a group. So two to three minutes per person to share your answer to the prompt. So the first prompt I'm gonna throw in the chat is what is one of your most favorite memories growing up in your neighborhood? So feel free to tell your partners where you grew up and what your favorite memory was there. So for me personally, I grew up in Rego Park, Queens, and one of my favorite memories is just going to the park with my mom. So for this prompt, you're going to have about six minutes with your partners, just like make sure everyone gets a chance to speak. And before the breakout rooms close, you're probably going to see a little pop up window on your screen saying that the window is going to close in 30 seconds. And you can just take that time to like thank your partners and say goodbye. So does anybody have any questions before I set up the breakout rooms? No, but we just had a couple of new people join. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Hi. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Do you want to just recap to Lila? Yeah. So for those of you joining, we're going to go into breakout rooms and meet our neighbors and answer some question prompts. And let me know if you see it in the chat. I just had thrown it in the chat. Do you see anything in the chat? I see it. Okay. Yeah. So you'll be answering with your neighbors. What is your most favorite memory growing up in your neighborhood? And yeah, you're going to have two to three minutes each to answer the question. Okay. If we are all set, I'm going to open the breakout rooms now and I will see you in a bit. Great, I think that we're all back now. So I really love to take some group shares before we move on to the next prompt. But just before anyone shares, I just wanna introduce the step back, step forward rule that some of you might be familiar with. So if you don't normally share in big groups, I encourage you to share. And if you're one who's usually very enthusiastic to share, I still welcome you to share, but just be mindful of letting others share as well. And if you don't feel comfortable sharing the big group with your voice, you can always feel free to throw your thoughts in the chat. So if you'd like to share, you can raise your hand using the Zoom reactions button and I will call on you. So yeah, I'd love to know your favorite memories growing up. Not all at once. <laughs> uh, Erica? Okay, so um, it was interesting because I realized for me, community has been part of my life since I was little. I grew up in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and we had, I grew up when it wasn't like a booming town. Like there was boarded up windows and there was like unsafe areas and a lot of different types of communities that had like left and then others coming together, very transitional. And being alone was something that was part of my life because there wasn't a lot of children around, but my family was very engaged with the community and everyone, because it was like a transitioning neighborhood and everybody wanted to uplift the neighborhood, we all became like family. Like all of my neighbors, I still know now, I go home, I can say hello to people all the time. And uh, there's like beautiful parts to what it is now and also like what it was when I was a kid. So. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. I think Julie, you wanna share? Yeah, um, thanks Delilah. Um, my favorite memory from growing up in Spring Valley, New York um, was just playing outside. And I think our, our group um, mentioned that a lot. And um, you know, this past year, obviously uh, I, a lot of time to reflect. Um, and I definitely have appreciated um, just memory, happy memories of playing baseball in the street, 
um, playing, you know, with the neighborhood kids. Um, and I definitely appreciate the diversity that, that I grew up with and the people, the, the kids that I grew up with. I, I mentioned that um, Spring Valley is very diverse. It's predominantly um, people of color and each, each ethnic group um, kind of, um, or each immigration group, I should say, um, in the 60s, um, which is when my parents um, immigrated from the Philippines, they actually found each other um, in the neighborhood. So my street was a lot of Filipinos, um, a, a Korean family across the street, a Jamaican family, two, two doors down. Um, and I realized that especially now, um, and you know, after George, George Floyd um, in almost a year ago, um, and an explosion of race, that I, as a, as, a, as a kid growing up in Spring Valley, um, was taught race, not by book, but by, by just playing with, with kids. Um, and I have just had such an appreciation, especially in, in this past year of, of my childhood. Um, it definitely wasn't perfect by any means, um, but I definitely had a, a good like, group of kids that, that knew how to play. Thank you for sharing that, Julie. Does anybody want to share? I think we have maybe time for like one more share. Uh, Steph? Hi, I'm Steph. I am um, going after Julie because my favorite memory is somewhat similar in that I grew up um, in the Hudson Valley also. And my favorite memory is playing outside in our fields and specifically playing soccer. Um, so, you know, I got to be on the team and you know, be silly and learn something and get out all my energy so, and be outside. So that was definitely my favorite memory. Nice, thank you. So yeah, thank you all so much for sharing. So for our next prompt, I'm going to throw it in the chat. We want you to think of your neighbors, communities, or organizations whose voices you feel have been ignored. What do you feel are the biggest needs in your community and what stories do you think need to be told? So for this question and the rest of the prompts, I'm gonna ask that we have maybe like one volunteer in each group to sort of just jot down any sort of keynotes that your group discusses. And once we come back from the breakout rooms, you can like feel free to add these to the chat. So, you know, you can feel free to grab a pen and paper or just write your laptop. Um, but yeah, we're just asking this just because we really wanna hear your input and be able to implement any ideas that you have. And so for this prompt, you're gonna have a little extra time with your group. You'll have about eight minutes. And yeah, I'm gonna real quickly recreate this room. So hopefully you'll get to meet someone new. And yeah, does anybody have any questions in the meantime? Oh, just to add that if there's the Stoop Stories team member in your group, they'll take notes. <laughs> we will take notes. So you might not need anybody else. <laughs> Okay, okay I'm going to open the breakout rooms and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so yeah, I think that we're all back now. So again, I'd love to take some group shares. And again, let's just use the same guidelines as last time. And again, just feel free to throw your thoughts in the chat if you prefer that, and I can read them out loud. And if you were the note taker, feel free to throw any keynotes we took in the chat. But yeah, if you'd like to share using your voice, you can raise your hand and I will call on you. Anybody? <laughs> Where? Oh, I was pointing. I thought Kate wanted to say something. Yeah, I did. I was oh, really okay. sorry. That was me. I'm sorry. You didn't understand my, <laughs> my non 
emoji. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Should I go ahead and share what my group talked about in in the notes that I took? Yeah, you can. Okay. Um, we had a couple ideas um, for people whose stories we thought haven't in the past been told or well represented and who we thought would be a good fit. Um, the first were people of lower income. Uh, we also talked about children, especially since children, you know, have so many types of like behaviors that they develop when they're young and people don't typically like highlight children when they're young. They, it's typically when you're older looking back. Um, and then we also talked about people who are disabled um, or elderly people in terms of ac having access of just getting around the city with transit, also access to public spaces and parks. Uh, and we also talked about um, stories about homeless people to help humanize them, especially with uh, the pandemic and how that's unfortunately caused a spike in homelessness about throughout the city. Great, yeah, those are really important, yeah. Anybody else would like to share? Okay, I see in the chat. I mean, that was just for a record of mm -hmm. notes, but I, I guess I can share, Tiffany shared quite a lot about um, the Red Hook community or just black and brown communities in general. Did you, Tiffany, did you want to share or do you want me to give any kind of summary of what we were? I like when um, I speak and then others speak, uh, as I like to see that you got the message if you understand what I was trying to say. That's great, because I actually was wondering the same thing as I was writing it. Um, yeah, that basically a lot of black and brown communities are continuing to gentrify fast and they may have the resources to make things happen, but not the history of the neighborhood and the people that are actually from the neighborhood don't seem to be able to get high enough roles to really have power. So they are like, you know, they're doing all the work, they're creative, they're putting in the sweat equity, but um, but not getting sort of the, the clout and the funding needed to really implement stuff. And just the other really big takeaway that I heard was, and you can tell me, Tiffany, if I heard that, right, um, that a lot of arts organizations and nonprofits that um, come in to help these communities want to do, want to really address quantity. They want to have a huge program of 500 kids, whereas we know from research that um, smaller classes are more impactful. Um, did I get that right, Tiffany? Is that what I heard? Yes. Okay, good. And then Edith shared as well. So I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk for everyone. If <laughs> Edith, do you want to? Do you want to? Yeah, really sure. interesting. Um, so for me, one big thing that's top of mind um, is the Asian community, especially right now. Um, on Sunday, I volunteered and helping to hand out pepper spray to folks in Chinatown. Many of them el elderly, many of them low income. And they um, just came from donations from people like th through Instagram. And so we were able to hand out a thousand, but there were 3000 people out there. And it was, you know, uh, we're very glad that we were able to do so, but the fact that so many people were there feeling this need, there was clearly a need, um, you know, a feeling of unsafety, and especially seeing, you know, these elderly folks just um, feeling very powerless. I think that this is something that, you know, that I do see some people talking about it more and more, um, but it's also, I, I think there's a lot more that can be done um, as opposed to handing out personal safety alarms and pepper spray to folks in Chinatown, but how can we really help increase awareness and share ideas for what other folks and allies can do? So I, I shared the idea of bystander intervention. Um, and I know there are a lot of other ideas out there, but I, I, yeah, I just, just wanted to share my thoughts on, on that um, because it was um, encouraging to, to know that we were able to hand out 
you know, those supplies, but also the fact that we couldn't help as many people that really felt that they needed that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Edith. Yeah, I think it's really important for us to create safer communities. So, Lara? So I, on a lighter note, um, I just wanted to springboard off of what Edith said as far as, um, so I was on with Julie and Kendra, and it was interesting because we were sort of stripping back and talking about how there are communities within everyone's community where the representation is usually just what you see in the news, you know, like the anti-Asian violence, which has been going on for a long time, you know, even before now, that's what we're seeing now. Like you're seeing only the negative side of things, which we know is pretty much how American news is, you know, it's scare tactics, it's fear. And, um, you know, we don't really have like a good news channel, but, um, you know, we were just talking about the idea of, you know, or, or Julie was emphasizing everyday stories, you know, with an Asian face, like every, it doesn't really happen all that often that you're just seeing a black family, an Asian family, a whatever family as a family, as opposed to prefacing it with an Asian family. So we were sort of stripping it back and talking about the voice of, you know, your average person from an Asian community, Kendra was also talking about how in bed sty it's very black and white. You know, I'm very white. <laughs> I would stand out in a throng of, you know, you know, certain sections of bed sty But she was also saying that there is a growing Latinx community and an Afro-Latino community that she's, you know, curious about. And, um, you know, it would be interesting to really sort of take a deep dive and understand better how, you know, this other group has embraced that neighborhood, which is not heavily, you know, coded with, you know, Spanish signs or, or anything that's geared towards their ethnicity. So that was sort of interesting, just sort of more about the oversights and things um, and more about inclusivity. Great, yeah, I think that's a great insight. So in the essence of time, yeah, I really appreciate everyone's input. Then the essence of time, I'm going to push us on to the next prompt. So we want to know about the times sort of on the flip side, like when you have felt connected to your neighbors. So we can see like how we can create more experiences like this in the future and maybe like through stoop stories. So the next prompt I threw in the chat are what are times you have felt the most connected to your neighbors or your city in general and why? And how can we create more moments like this in the future? So again, you'll have eight minutes with your group. And yeah, if everybody is ready, I'm gonna open up the breakout rooms. I think that we're all back now. So again, I'd love to take some group shares. So again, you can feel free to raise your hand if you like to share the last time you felt connected to your neighbors. last time or what times wait all right good or yeah anytime that you felt connected to your all right Mars, the floor is yours why don't you why don't you recap for us note taker oh i talked too much um <laughs> i'm trying to do the step back step forward thing um well we talked a lot about getting back to that pure Kendra reminded me that, that pure love for just sitting on the stoop which is what made me inspired to do stoop stories to begin with and I've been work I've been inside so much working that I forgot now that it's warm out like that's where you meet your neighbors and you connect with people and you learn all kinds of cool new things and it's just such a it's an exciting energy too being out there um, and it's a refuge but it's also a place where people let off steam. I mean, that was where we were banging pots at the beginning of the pandemic. And um, I remember the kids across the street from me banging pots and like we would do it in unison, like w across the road. It was just very funny. And then Kendra has this amazing performance series on a stoop in bed -Stuy, so which she can talk about more, but it, I, we went and we filmed it and it just seeing people perform on stoops is really inspiring too. 
So stoops are definitely connecting and that's why we're here in the first place. Yeah, anyone else wanna jump in? I think we're just um, echoing a, a theme of coming together. Uh, in our group, we talked a lot about, you know, just what brings us together versus what just divides us. And a lot of times it's just, you know, a lot of things get solved over, you know, lingering time around food and, you know, just hanging out and making space for each other. So I think we all, you know, talked about picnics and you know just stew pangs for no no particular reason and just the passers-by is you know like the fun of that where you're just hanging out and people pass by have a you know and like want to throw something out and you end up having some of the, mo the most remarkable conversations with the, the randomest of folks that you may have never seen again that just happened to, or before that walked down your street but you know that's the beauty of New York and I've lived a lot of different places and it's unique upon itself, not San Francisco, not Seattle, not, you know, Chicago to a lesser extent, it's a New York thing. And um, so I look forward to it and look back on it. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, for me, I feel like I've felt connected to fellow New Yorkers anytime we like gather around a street performer like in the subway platform like I don't know it just always felt like we were coming together for like a few minutes and then we disperse but like it feels like a sense of community in that moment yeah anybody else would like to share Blair so I want to share by asking the people in my group to share because you said something about Subway and I was lucky enough to finally meet, um, wait, now I'm trying to remember with, no, not Julie, she's chalk, not Edith, Claire. I had to make my own notes, like keep track of people. But Claire, can you just tell people about the um, Subway Social Club a little? Uh, sure, so no one really chats on transit in New York City and I think actually around the world. But um, the subway and kind of other modes of public transportation um, is kind of the place where a lot of people from all different cultures and backgrounds and, you know, in general, we're in movement, we're going someplace together. So um, basically, we wear a pin when we signal when we open a chat and we take it off and we just need some time for ourselves. And now we're kind of launching a campaign um, where if you're in New York City, you stand in a certain place if you feel vulnerable and you want to know that someone else is on your car. But um, I love, I sorry, I just want to say like, I love stoop stories. And I think one, I love the fact that um, so many times when you think of stoop, you think of like descending and kind of like going into your house or separating you from this public space, which is the sidewalk. And I think stoop stories has really transformed kind of the stoop, right? You have, you know, it's not just a private stoop you've had, You've, you've pictured people on the subway on steps and in, instead of taking it and turning it into this place of um, kind of moving away from the public sector, the public area, you've transformed the stoop into, um, you've changed the definition of the stoop. It's, not, it's kind of like the steps, um, um, since not everyone has like a physical stoop. Um, so I love that. Um, you've been able to do that and have been featuring people who um, might not have the traditional stoop, but have steps. And I think it's, it's also anchoring on kind of this idea of mobility um, and both kind of descending, but also kind of, um, kind of climbing upwards um, to, and bringing people together. So I love that as well. Thanks for sharing that, Claire. I think that was beautifully said. <laughs> Yeah, I think that might be a good segue to our last question, which is like, what initiatives would you like to see Stoop Stories start in support of your communities? So just throw it in the chat for you to reference. But yeah, I open sort of like a group discussion about this. You can take a few moments to think. 
Can you repeat that? Yeah, what initiatives would you like to see Stoop Story start in support of your communities? Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Um, so I'm new to this and is this the first time you've done this or is this part of a series and you've, you know, like I'm hopping in on the 10th time? <laughs> Well, thank you for joining, Jennifer. We, um, we you, we'll share this after so you can see the beginning, the intro part, but and we can certainly tell you more about it. But this of is course. the very first virtual community stoop chat, and it could be the first of many. Like this could be one of the things that we do. You mm -hmm. know, we also want to ask you guys later about other kinds of group, you know, um, platforms that you might want to sort of keep in touch with people on. But um, I mean, maybe it'll help to throw out an example of just, we did a series of stories about NYCHA residents in Red Hook, um, for example, and they don't have stoops, they have steps. So we were like, same thing, you know, every, the red steps in Times Square, we did activist stories there, Borough Hall, there's, yeah. So a stoop is a state of mind kind of situation. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of different things we'd love to do in the community and, and kind of like um, help help community leaders, um, you know, spearhead projects. So we're really open to ideas. We want this to sort of be turned over to the community to create with us, if that makes sense. Um, thank you for sharing that. And um, I think it's a fantastic idea. I'm, I'm kind of, any, I'm eight, I'm dating myself, but I'm thinking of a heavy metal parking lot uh, documentary of, um, you know, just being able to, you know, share the beauty of, you know, the things that go down on a stoop, you know, or the equivalent of a stoop everywhere um, or a heavy metal parking lot or, you know, whatever parking lot. Um, and so thinking about ideas, I we're in such an incredible time to invite people back to shared space. And, you know, so I think that's where, you know, helping people reconnect with, um, and I'm new to this space because I just moved to Brooklyn. Um, and so it's, it's like just inviting people back to, you know, just something that is so celebrated and how do you make it more meaningful? you know, maybe there's, you know, there's a game element that, you know, you're just encouraging your block to participate in. And, you know, maybe there are, you know, just in a dumb way thinking of, you know, some conversation starters that, you know, you might've found in a cheesy restaurant 20 years ago that, or 15 years ago, that you're just saying, you know what, you guys are all hanging on the soup. Do you mind like, you know, just, asking these questions, having this conversation, because you're sitting here for five hours anyways, Friday is gorgeous. And then just tapping into this resource and sharing, you know, what you guys talked about. Like, it's that easy because, you know, neighbors don't care and why not have a reason to re-engage with them and just say, there's five questions, you know, talk about one of them, throw it in there. Like, we'd love to just accumulate what people are thinking. I don't know, just spitballing people. <laughs> Yeah, no, I appreciate it, Jennifer. Hannah, I think your hand is raised. Jennifer, that actually gave me an idea. What if it was kind of like a everyone on their own stoop or like everyone on their stoop or comes to the stoop to like, or the stage to teach for five minutes about a topic that inspires you, teach about a topic that you're into like, like, um, I'm a fermenter. I'm such a geek about fermenting. Why yes. not? Yes, learn something new on the stoop. Stoop is an educational type of a type of a mindset, like um, Kendra's performances on the stoop. So, like, it could be an educational space where people can come together and learn something new, and like we invite different people up to the stoop and up to the mic to be able to have like five minutes unfiltered. This is something new that I wanna teach the community about. And this is what I think should be um, said and should be out there. Love That's it. Amazing, absolutely amazing. It gets me to thinking about like 
a community scavenger hunt. Um, and then you find all of these questions and you have a group and you go back with your group and y'all talk about these questions and start to get to know each other. It's like a scavenger hunt mixed with a picnic where everybody just come together and you have out of each group, each person, each group have a person who come up to the stage and share all those ideas from those questions. Yeah, I really love that idea. Claire, I think you want to share? Yeah, I, where I live, thank you, Delilah, where I live right now, I actually don't have a stoop. And um, I think we're also in my first group talking about, and I think the the beauty of public space and kind of going to a park or going to um, someplace where we can interact, but I'll also be socially distanced. Um, but I would love, I mean, my mom has a stoop, so I'm grateful that she does, but I mean, I think people like get tired sometimes like when they're walking around and walking around New York City so I think it'd be really cool if it was like a sign that says you can sit on my stoop like you can just take a break and chat and like you don't need to I think there's always this kind of pressure of like I can I even sit there like they're not there but I don't feel like I can so if there was a sign saying sit on my stoop take a break have a have your have a drink have like water or whatever and just like my home is your home kind of mentality, but with the actual stoop, um, I think would be cool. And I think also in terms of like the city, we need kind of geographic touch points where we feel safe. And I feel like if there were stoops in the city where this is where I feel safe or, and knowing that you have a home kind of outside in a different borough, I think it would be a cool, a cool type of thing and get to know other neighbors, explore, sit on a stoop. You know, it's like the game of, like the game of Thrones days have like chairs everywhere. Again, kind of could be like a scavenger hunt and kind of playing off the idea of like giving a, sharing your knowledge and exchanging knowledge, but I don't know, like public stoops. That is awesome. I must say that is so cool. I love that idea. I hope somebody can get that started. That could be uh, Stoop Stories. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love that, Claire. That would definitely make communities feel more welcoming. Um, Julie, you had your hand up first. Uh, yeah, but I guess the, um, the thing that comes to mind is the mayoral race that, that's coming up uh, this summer. And that's, that's definitely on my mind. And I just love how Stoop Stories just shares stories of everyday everyday people. And, and I, I think that your style um, and, and has just given me a way to connect with New Yorkers again and with the mayoral race. I don't I don't know what my I don't have an idea yet of, of like what you can do, but I would love for Stoop Stories to do something around civic engagement, um, local politics and you know, this past election year, um, there was a lot of education around on, on national level, um, but I'm a big believer in that all politics is, is local and you don't necessarily have to obviously take a, a stance. You can go the, the civic duty route, um, but as, as New Yorkers, whoever the next mayor is, is, is gonna be a, a, a big job and, and we'll all have, we all have to do our civic duty to participate um, in the in the rebuilding of New York, um, and I, I think a lot of your followers are are artists, and I would love for artists and musicians to be part of part of that um, rebuilding of of New York. Yeah, I really love that, truly. Uh, Edith, you have your hand up. Hi. Okay, so um, I just remembered, uh, I think Julie shared that in one of our breakout sessions that she was doing chalk art on the sidewalk and it really like brought joy to the neighborhood and, you know, got people talking and connecting. And um, I think like it would be so great if there was some sort of, I don't know, like a collaborative, mural type thing that our community can maybe contribute or some sort of art. I, I, I really love the idea of um, 
as, as she mentioned, like including art, of course, like musical performances have been amazing with these public stu performances. And I think, yeah, just art is such a big part of um, sharing and spreading joy. And maybe if it's even like, how Claire and her Subway Social Club has these pins that if you see somebody with a pin, you know that you're sort of in this community. If different stoops had like their own sort of like art and it's sort of like, I don't know. Anyway, I just like art. <laughs> oh yeah, I love the idea of like making art together, making that easier to like meet each other. But yeah, these are all such great ideas. I'm definitely very inspired right now. Um, so in the essence of time, these are all really great ideas. If you have more great ideas, definitely tell Marge, email Marge. <laughs> um, but I just want to move on to the next segment of, to our event. So I really hope that you've enjoyed meeting your neighbors. And Marge and Lara have some exciting news to share in a bit. But first, we'd love, you know, just more of your input in shaping the future of Stoop stories. So we have like this really short two minute survey for you to fill out that we'd appreciate. So I'm just going to paste the link in the really chat. Short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just going to throw on some music and we can fill it out. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to message me in the chat. And yeah. Okay, Jokey. So thank you for filling out this survey. Kendra, that song was Sunny by, I actually don't know how to pronounce the artist, but I think we can send the playlist um, maybe in the thank you email. Um, but yeah, so we are going a little over. It's already 828. But if you can stay, we'd love that. And if you need to go, that's totally cool. So Marge and Lara have some exciting news to share about that's coming up for Stoop Stories. So I'll pass it on to Marge. 
Thank you. Thanks, everybody. This is really quick. We just have um, our big uh, exhibit opening next month at the Brooklyn Children's Museum. Um, some of you have been hearing about this for a long time and it's finally opening on May 22nd. And there's probably gonna be some kind of opening party which we'll let people know about. But the exciting thing is we even have a section that features um, a kid photographer with her images that she told a stoop story about a family that she knows. So we're very excited about that. And just watch our website and social feeds for info. Yeah, and I just want to close out by also saying thank you. And it's been really great to actually meet some of you virtually who I've you know, seen all the pictures that Marge has documented <laughs> and I've edited some of your stories, but to see you, it's like, it's really nice to see it all come together. And, uh, and we're just excited about you know, taking the next steps, year two of Scoop Stories with you. So like this kind of thing, we wanna do more of it and we wanna get your input in terms of all the next steps for Scoop Stories. And we'll follow up with those of you when you filled out your uh, form. If you, you know, if you're interested in collaborating, um, if, if you have questions, ideas, we will follow up after today's call. So, thank you and great to meet you. Yeah. Before we close, I'd love for us to maybe quickly like throw in the chat like one thing that you're taking away from today's event, and I can just read some out loud. <laughs> Sorry, that was my alarm. <laughs> Human connection. Human connection, community. Meeting new neighbors across the boroughs. Stoops are for everyone, even if you don't have one. I'm sorry, is my audio off? I'm just hearing. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, cool. So again, we want to thank you for coming. These takeaways are great. But before we officially close, I would like to take a group photo if everyone is okay with that. If not, you can definitely turn off your camera. But I'll just do like a little countdown for us. And on one, I'll take a screenshot of us. So let me do this. Okay, so three, two, one. Great. All right. Amazing. Thank you all for coming. And I'll pass it on to Marge for the last time. Ah, yes. Just one more chat, uh, one more goodbye. And just check out our website where you can share your own Stoop story. Um, and you can sign up for Stoop Alerts, which is our monthly newsletter. We promise not to send too much. Um, yeah. And we'll follow up with some additional info via email as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a great night, all. Bye, everyone.